With this question, there will be more coming up over there. So we've got these three and then those two. So it says in the diagram below the graphs of F, which is a tan graph, and okay, let's highlight. So F is a tan graph. So there, just a normal tan graph. And then G of X is a sin graph. So like that. Now the first question for one mark says, what is the period of G? The period is how long does a graph take to make one cycle? So you can see that it starts over here and it completes one cycle there at 180 degrees. So that'll be the period. Another way to work out the period is to take the original period of that graph. We know that an original, the original sin graph has a period of 360 for sin and cos. For tan, it's 180. And then you divide it by k. Now, what do I mean by k? It's this number in front of the x. You know how I sometimes show y equals to a sin of k x minus p plus q. Well, that k is what I'm talking about. So the original is 360. The k value they've told us here is a 2, and that'll give us 180. Okay, this one says, calculate the value of k. Okay, which k are they talking about? Oh, they're talking about this k, I see. So the point A is... Oh, it says point A and B are two points of intersection. Oh, okay, so it's on both graphs. So this is a very easy question because you know the x value, but you just need the y value. So you can just plug it into the equation. So f of 60, so you're just letting x equal to 60. Go ahead, type that on your calculator, and you get square root 3. You could have also used this equation, absolutely fine. And so that will just give us square root 3. And of course, you could also write it in decimals. If you do it in decimals, it'll be 1.73. The next one, calculate the coordinates of B. Where is B? Okay, B is where these graphs are intersecting, but it's only for one mark. So you don't need to go do some crazy simultaneous equations and all of that. Just remember that graph G has a period of 180. That means that it takes 180 degrees to get from this from this position to this position. Can you see that they are equal? Look at that. Or what I'm trying to say is, sorry, um, can you see that on graph G, which is the sin graph, it'll take 180 degrees to repeat itself. So it would take 180 degrees to go from there to there, for example. It would take 180 degrees to go from there to there. And it would take 180 degrees to go from there to there. All of the places that are the same, it takes 180 degrees to go between those places. So it's 180 degrees to go between A and B. So if this is 60 degrees, if you minus 180, that'll give you negative 120. And the y value is on the same horizontal um, as that one. And so that would be, I mean, it's difficult to say that it's the same, but for one mark, you would just make that assumption. So it's going to be like that. This question says, write down the range of g of x, but if they put a 2 in the front. Okay, so let's ignore the 2 in the front. Let's just look at g of x for now. So g of x is the sin graph. Okay, so its range at the moment goes from, um, okay, they haven't given us numbers, but you should know that this two in the front here makes the graph go up to two and down to negative two, okay? But now if they put a two in the front, then that'll multiply the graph by two. So it'll actually go up to, it'll go all the way up to four, Whoops, let's do that again. And down to negative four. So, sorry, so four, and then down to negative four. So the range will now be, you could say, y is an element going from negative four 
to positive 4. If you prefer interval notation, you could say y is bigger than or equal to negative 4, smaller than or equal to 4. Carrying on, these questions say, for which value of x will this ugly expression be smaller than 0 in the interval minus 90 to 0? Okay, so they only want us to look between this area over here. So they want to know, okay, well, this, this isn't nice to work with. So what you rather do is you just do this. You take the F graph to the other side, and then you have that. So they're saying, where is the graph of G? And then don't worry about the X plus 5. We'll talk about that now. Where is the graph of G smaller than the graph of F? Is this green one over here? And then the graph of f is that one. Now it says, where is the graph of g smaller than f? And then we'll talk about the x plus 5 just now. So where is the green graph underneath the yellow graph? Well, that's going to be from here up to here. That's where the green is underneath. So... I've, as I said, we will come back to the x plus 5 part. So it's going to be from this coordinate to that coordinate. So luckily we know that coordinate. It's 0. But we don't have this coordinate. But now can you see that there is... You can see there's like a symmetry from here to here, right? Uh, that distance, that horizontal, or that to there and to there is the same. So if we know that this is 60 degrees then this one here should be negative 60. Okay, so that's negative 60. Okay, so we're going from negative 60 to 0. But now we have to look at this x plus 5. They're doing it to both of the graphs. Now, what does x plus 5 do? Well, x plus 5 moves the graph 5 degrees to the left. 5 degrees left. But it's moving both of these graphs 5 degrees to the left. So this is just going to go to negative 65, and this is going to go to negative 5. So we could just say x must be, um, oh, they have equal to as well. Okay. Negative 65 and smaller than negative 5. If you prefer interval notation, you could go from negative 65 up to negative 5. Now, some of you might be like, yeah, but Kevin, if we move it 5 degrees to the left, doesn't it change where they intersect? It won't change where they intersect because we're moving both of the graphs to the left. So that won't change anything. This last one says, for three marks, determine the values of P for which sin x cos x, okay, sin x cos x is equal to P, will have exactly two real roots in the interval. Now, if you read that question and you just like, I don't understand a thing, then you can leave that question out in the exam. If you're a student that is getting in the 40s, 50s, 60s, um, even the 70s, you don't have to attempt every single question. If you see a question like this that's got these ugly words like roots and blah, 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 leave it out. I'm not saying leave out all questions, but especially these last kind of questions in a question like this. Um, it's going to, because you've got to weigh up how long is it going to take you. And if it takes you too long, then you are going to decrease your chances of being able to do the questions after this if it was an exam uh, successfully. That's the problem that we have. If, if it's three marks, you don't want to spend too much time on it. Remember, these exams are out of, um, these exams are three hours long, so you have 180 minutes, and they're out of 150 marks if it was a full, ex if it's a full exam paper. So if you divide those two numbers, you get 1.2 minutes per mark. 1.2 minutes per mark. So if you say 1.2 minutes per mark multiplied by 3, that's 3.6. That means 3 minutes and 36 seconds. 3 minutes and 36 seconds. So if this question takes you longer than 3 minutes and 36 seconds, move on. Like if you're going to sit and do this question for 10 minutes, that's really hurting your ability to do your other questions. Okay, but what we can do is, let's try this question. So it says, let's just work on this quickly. 
I can see here there's a sin 2x. Now we know that that is a double angle, what could be a double angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on this a little bit. So I'm going to say g of x is equal to 2 sin of 2x. Then I'm going to say g of x is equal to 2. And then I'm going to change the sin 2x into this. So that's going to be uh, 2 sin x cos x. And then that's going to be g of x is equal to 2 times 2 is 4 sin x cos x. And then... What I'm going to then do is take this expression, sin x cos x equals to p, and I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. Okay, because in maths you're allowed to do that. If you do it to the one side, you do it to the other side. So now, all of a sudden, the question is very different. They are now saying that g of x, which is that, so they're saying, where does the graph of g of x have exactly two real roots. Well, remember, these are like y values. So let's say the y value is 1. So the y value of 1 is somewhere here. So if you draw a horizontal line where y is 1, y is 1, it'll cut the graph 1, 2, 3, 4 times. But they want to know where does it only cut? twice. They want only two roots, okay? So maybe if we make y equal to 2, that works perfectly because have a look there, it only cuts, it only cuts twice. And if you make y equal to minus 2, it also only cuts twice. And so there's where our two answers should be. So the y value, or, or this graph, it's wherever this graph is equal to 2 or negative 2. So we could then say that the 4p must be equal to 2 or the 4p must be negative 2. And so if you then solve, you'd end up with p equals to a half or p equals to negative a half. That's quite a weird question.